Hello and welcome to another episode of Hereford FC here on Vidalite FM. It's been a long, long time since I last posted a video and that's because I've moved house and I've been very, very, very busy trying to make the house um, livable and uh, I think it's just about right. I was able to get everything set up today and record a video and uh, in the meantime I've been playing FM in the background whilst I've been doing the house move and um, uh, well, I think I would jump in here uh, and answer a request from the comments. So I don't normally get requests in the comments, but someone has asked me um, about transfers and so on. So I'm going to try to um, give you a little bit of um, a guide of how I do transfers. And uh, we'll, we'll do like one sort of dummy transfer, I suppose. I don't really need any new players at the moment, but... I thought I'd jump in here since, since I haven't done an episode in a very long time and do that for you. So just to give you an update on a team before we jump into the transfers bit. We are playing in the Van Rama National, we're still in the first season, still in November so we haven't even reached the January mark where I normally do an episode. And there are a few players that are new to the squad uh, since the last episode so we'll go through those as well. And uh, the if I show you the league table, we are pretty near the top. So we are one game behind Chester and one point behind them. So basically we're in a very good position to be first of the league. Um, so we should have no problems. In, as far as the other competitions, we were knocked out in the first round proper of the FA Cup. Um, against a team that's you know a couple of leagues above us, so that is okay. We are still in the run for the FA Trophy. We're currently in the second round against Blith. Or Blythe. I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. But anyway, you let me know, I'm sure. And there we have it. Uh, as far as finance, we're doing okay. Although we have just invested quite a lot of money on improving our youth facilities. So that is one of the requests I made recently. Uh, let's see. What, what do we... Oops, I just did something, didn't I? There we go. Um, where do we see the board? Ah, there you go. So yeah, so we've been they've rejected a few things, but they are uh, they're not going to buy the stadium, I don't think. But they are they have increased the junior coaching and they are going to improve the youth facilities. So that is good. Uh, and, and that one is actually in view of uh, increasing the youth level. At the moment, the youth are playing in the kind of the normal league nothing special so there we go there's only one youth player anyway for now um staff i've obviously completed all the staff both for the um senior the under 18s but also i've created an under 21s team uh, that gives us an extra coach that we can use for training the uh, senior team as well, so we're using the under-21s manager as a regular coach just to kind of give myself a bit of relief. As you can see, I am coaching absolutely everything except goalkeeping and tactical possession. So, that is that. Now, let's jump into, first of all, the transfers that I did post the last episode. So, in the last episode, I've pretty much sorted out the defense, and then after the first, the, the last episode, I went and sorted out the midfield and also the attack. So let's see if we can jump into this. So I'll give you a whole overview. The two goalkeepers that we have, Russ Griffiths is ended up being the main goalkeeper. Um, and then we have Bradley Foster is basically become our backup. He's on loan from West Brom. Then we have uh, Nana on the left side of defense and his backup is Darren Hines Hins. I don't know how to say his name but anyway so that is his backup um, on the left side of defense we have two players pretty much competing for the same spot so we got Mackenzie Lemon and we also have Isaac uh, Piplato in the center we have a few kind of 
Actually, all us, all our center defenders are very good. This guy is very good. George uh, Nevet is a very good young player. So if you're looking for a good young player for your starter teams, look out for this guy. George Nevet is a he's a real player, and he plays in real life for Rochdale or Rockdale. So he's very good. We have him on loan. Uh, and then we have Neil Cooney. Uh, we have Paul uh, Downing. What other players do we have for the fence? Da, da, da. Let me try and look at my notes as well. We have Daniel, da Daniel Devine, he's okay. Uh, we have Soha, who's, Sonha, who is also fairly mediocre. Um, he's got potential though. And then the last one on my list is Nathan Cameron. Where are you? Nathan Cameron. Um, so yeah, I think the those these three, especially these two, um, are the best for the defensive midfield. Uh, this is our first sort of change from last last um, episode. So Jordan Lydon, we already had him last episode. Went and grabbed him, Australian player. And then on top of that, we went and got uh, Jonathan Page. Now he's young and he's got potential. We have him on on a permanent. Is it permanent deal? It's a zero um, zero contract, but hopefully we can keep him for long because he's got quite nice potential. So hopefully we can develop him. He's not great at the moment, but he's actually better than the guy that's playing at the moment. So even though he has more star ratings, um, am I am I saying the truth? I think so. I think in game this guy's done better. Even on that guy, that guy on paper is better. Then in the middle of the fence, sorry, in the middle of the midfield, we have two new players, Sam uh, Colland. He's come on loan from Everton. No, sorry, he's come for free from Everton. Where's Jonathan come from? Farnborough. Okay. And then we have Sean Brown. Now, Sean Brown, uh, not the best, I must say, but he's okay. He's got a couple of nice things about him but not the best but that's what we could get he came from QPR on a free then on the right of attack uh, we I don't know why this guy is listed uh, why is he listed transfer status not listed not listed Confirm. Uh, we got Connor Stanley and he was already at the club so he's not new Connor Stanley um, last episode. And then we have Akinola. Akinola is new. So Akinola here is. He came to us from St. Albans. Left side. We've had a few iterations of this actually, but I'll show you the, the players that I have at the moment. So we got Stephen Kinsella. Um, and he's been with us for a while now, since the beginning of the season. He's from uh, Ireland. And then recently we got Josh Epiath. Epiath. Josh Epiath. 25. He, he's not going to improve that much more. He came to us from Northam. So from Leicester. Before that, we had a different player, actually. Let me see if I can... Transfers. But my, that player got poached. There we go. So... Kalik Raymond Calendar. He got poached by Froome, which aren't really a team that does much. But yeah, we had him before that. Um, and yeah, so anyway, he was doing okay actually. He had eight appearances of four goals, one assist, two players in the match, seven rating. And then he just decided to sign a contract with someone else, even though we made him a counter offer. But there we go. That's just how life goes. Uh, I don't think there were any other things like that. Let me just have a look through some of these names to see if anyone else has left. Uh, no, we still have him. I think that I think he was the only one that jumped jumped tail. Okay. And then finally, in attack, we have one new player. We have uh, Chris Porter. Chris Porter, a very old player, coming to us with a long career of playing in the Sky Bet. Um, leagues and then more recently Oldham in the national 
Uh, yeah, so Chris Paul has been holding a fort, waiting very patiently. We're waiting for Andrew Williams to get um, fit. He has not played yet this season. He's still recovering from injury. And when he does, he'll be probably our um, striker. But we'll see. We'll see. So we have two pretty old strikers. But that's okay because next year, hopefully, with the promotion and all that, we'll be able to get some new players in. And those guys will be you know, ready for retirement. No complaints. Like one of the things that you need to balance out in Football Manager is you need young players that will take you through to the future or that you can sell as you get promoted and get better. You need a mix of old players for two reasons, for experience and, uh, and mentoring. So they'll, men they'll have the experience, they'll be more confident, but also they'll mentor the younger players. But also, if you have a few of those around, um, they don't necessarily need to be very, very good, but they are, as you get better as a team, they are easy to get rid of because often they retire like within one or two years um, or they're quite happy to just sit back in the reserves or whatever so they're quite easy to replace and that's kind of one of the ways you can bring fresh blood into your uh, squad without much of a fuss um, yeah so you need a, a little bit of a balance some good players some younger players and some also some older players so that is it now a little bit of um, transfers so somebody asked me you know how do I do transfers blah blah so essentially what I do when I start a game and, and you're gonna have to use a little bit of your imagination here because I don't have all the tools available to me right now but what I do when I start um, at the save um, is that I go away and I decide on a tactic so the first thing I do is I decide okay what what tactic do I want to experiment with and, and you have to bear in mind that you know, I'm not a real football manager, so I don't really know much about tactics. But what I do like to do is experiment with positions. Like, for example, this year, the reason I've come up with this tactic is because I want to experiment with these two new positions. So that is the wide centre back and the inverted full back. Um, so I want to experiment with these two, and they have to be in this configuration. So this guy can overlap, and this guy can go wide and go up. Uh, I also wanted to experiment with a five-line defence. Uh, which then becomes a four-line defense when we're attacking. So I've never done that before in Football Manager. And then I wanted to have quite a simple attack um, set up. So I have just a poacher that sits up there and two wide attackers, uh, sorry, wide wingers on attack uh, with a center mid midfielder. So the attack is very simple. Just four players with um, some players supporting them. Like uh, this guy will support them. This guy will also support them sometimes, not as often. So yeah, so it's very simple layout. Then what I do is I actually use pen and paper to try and figure out what the um, green attribute. So the green mean um, key attributes, not preferable key attributes. Excuse me, I'm having a little bit of trouble because I've got like I'm trying to suppress some cough. So I'll. Um, Sorry. Yeah, so key attributes. So I'll go to each position and I'll, I'll take note of the key attributes that that position, that role, that that player needs to have in order to fulfill that role. Once I've noted all of these down, I then go away and create for myself some filters in the player, players in range. Sorry, go to my players in range. I set my scouting to the highest available to me at the time. And then uh, you probably will be able to see all my filters. So uh, yeah, so, th so there we go. So th these are all my filters, one for each position. I actually have three different types of central defenders for all those roles. Now my filters have a very basic layout. The first thing I do, and uh, actually let me start with Let's see goalkeepers for now. And I never save my filters. Once I've made them, they stay like that. Okay. So the reason I have this here is club. Uh, so my, my first filter, the top filter, is uh, I look for players within my club because I want to assess my own players. Okay. So, so I set a filter that is that I can switch off when I'm looking for other players to get in. But once I, when I'm assess, assessing my own players, put this filter on with the name of my club. 
I go for players that can, can play in that position and can partially play in that role. So they don't necessarily have to be a perfect fit for the role, but they have to be able to play in that role. And then I add, um, it's easier to see it this way. And then I add all of the key attributes for that position in that role. Just the key attributes, just the green ones. And then, uh, so when I add them, they always come up as default as 15. Yeah, and I just lower it down one by one until I find one of my players and I note down that number. So Russ Griffiths, I give him a rating of nine because if you go to his key attributes for a sweeper keeper in defense, the lowest attribute, the lowest number in the green is a nine. So he can have nine or better. Uh, and you can see what his nines are. He's got a nine in command of area, so we need to improve that. Nine in reflexes, so he needs to improve that, and so on. And actually, this plays into what I do with his development. So if you go to the training, you'll see that I'm developing sweeping because I want to bring up that those attributes, the nines in his profile. Okay, so that all ties into it. So I have actually um, a note, like an electronic note, um, that I keep my players. Uh, maybe see if I can show you. Do I still have that preset? I do. It's not great. Let me switch off some of these things. And if I rearrange this a little bit, am I able to? Yeah. Okay, let me rearrange this. There we go. So you'll be able to see it now. Um, so on my notes, I'll have the positions and then I'll have next to each position, um, you know, the, the amount of players. I always have two players per role, so 22 player squad. Uh, and then so I'll have the name of the player and then in brackets, the rating. And that rating will be this number here. Now, when I look for a new player, so I, I assess my, my squad in all the positions and then when I'm ready to go into my transfers, I will set my scouting to the maximum, tick off the Hereford bit, so that will give me all players in, within my range, within the scouting budget, and I will try to improve on that. Uh, oh, also I will set transfers to like the, the widest, so I always go for, it's available for transfer, um, as, as bad as doubtful, and it's available for full loan as doubt as bad, full, D doubtful. So here we go. I, in fact, here's an example. So this goalkeeper apparently is ever so slightly better than my goalkeeper. So Tula Dixon, Dickinson, 22 years old. I always go for the youngest possible player as well, because that gives me scope for improvement. Um, in this case, this player has been scouted as well. So he has slightly better um, attributes than my goalkeeper. I can try to approach him to sign. And this is when it gets interesting because I always try to down offer everything if I can. So he's happy to be a cup player. I don't, I don't know if I have any budget for him, by the way. I always try and remove everything I can and just go through the negotiating motions. So go down and then I'll go down again. I might have to up some of these things. Then I go down again. And I might, and then I go into panic mode. Once this red box comes up, I just go into panic mode and I'll be like, you know what? I'll offer you everything you want just to see if they'll come for me. So we've offered um, Tila or Tyler um, a contract. Obviously, I can't show you the um, buying process, but it's very much the same. I always bid low, very low. I start with like zero. Will you take zero for it? And then will you take two or will you take five? And increase my offer like that. Um, right. To finish, we'll, ju we'll jump into a match. Okay. Let me just save that. I always like to save before a match. Um, and it also save that transfer offer that we did. And we're gonna go and jump into a match. 
So I hope that was helpful, like just going through the process of how I do transfers. And I often do them at the 1st of January, f uh, sorry, 1st of July. That's when I do um, my transfers. So I do that process of going through every single one of my players and building my squad of 22 and then trying to improve on that with players from outside. And then I do the same again in the 1st or 2nd of January. Um, and I do the same. So I do it twice a year. Although in the lower leagues, because there's there are a few non-contracts, sometimes I have to do it more often because you know a player leaves for another club, they get poached or whatever. So sometimes I have to do it a few times. That was a very bizarre goal. They just go through the legs of my goalkeeper. did. Got smart passed into Weston and Weston from far fit it right. Oh no, he, it, I think he hit him in the knee or something. Not doing so well, apparently. Oh, yeah, he's gonna go for it. Can he goal it? Ah, oh, what a shame. Could have lobbed it a bit higher. So one thing to watch out for in this save is the dynamic here in the right side of defense. The in inverted fullback should become a defense a central defender, kind of. And the wide defender should come out and cover. That might be a penalty. And it is. Who's going to take it? Porter. So that's the striker. Oh, what a bad job. Well, I guess the goalkeeper did a good job on that one. You might be able to hear my washing machine in the background. I have tried to close all the doors, but it does vibrate quite a lot when it's in the spin cycle and so on, so it might be coming through the microphone, who knows? Yeah, so not really been playing the game much lately, as you can as you can tell, all the way from I don't know October last time I did an episode. I think it was October, all the way to now the new year, uh, and I've only gone from the start of the game to November, so not really had much time because of all the house move and so on. Okay, so can we get Epiath? And these guys in. Okay, that'll do. And then we'll get Cooney out. And things like the bench, I always try and get players that can play in a few different positions. So players that are quite versatile and are com like um, competent in a few different positions will always be in bench. Now, in terms of offloading players, um, I have used um, the feature like int using intermediaries, but because I don't really have 
players to sell. And the players that I do have to sell, they're not very good, and so nobody really wants to buy them. Not even for free. So, I haven't really made use of that feature that much. Um, so I won't be able to comment on that until until later in the game when I'm able to use that feature for players. Uh, selling players, you know, hasn't really been a feature of, of the game so far for me. It's more like, I guess, giving them up for free or giving them up for uh, a small amount of money or loaning them out. We'll have a look at that in a minute to see who we've offloaded. So we're 2 nil now. 2 nil down. Not playing particularly well in this match. I do like that the animations are better in this game. The movements of the players are a lot better. But a lot more realistic than before. Like the way they run for the ball and you know that there's actually a sense of urgency in the way they run and so on. Okay, so before we finish this episode, let's have a look at the players we've offloaded. I can't remember selling any players, but maybe I have. I haven't really been playing very often, so I don't really remember what's going on. So if you go to transfers, history. We sold a couple, but not for much. We sold Jordan for a K, um, Mendes for one and a half K. And Corby as well. Every everyone else we gave up for free. So yeah. Anyway. Okay, so that is it. I will come back again in January or February for in, in the game, I mean. Hopefully I'll be uploading more often now. So yeah, nice to be back, nice to be uploading videos again. And um uh, I guess thanks for watching till the end, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.